This is the 2023 Toyota Sequoia, and we're going to take it on a mountain adventure. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Historically, the large SUV segment has been absolutely dominated by the big three American brands. Ford, Chevy, GMC, they absolutely own this category. Over the years, Toyota has tried and tried to break into it, but so far they've had no luck. Well, for 2023, they're back with an all new Sequoia. The model we have here is a fully loaded off-road oriented TRD Pro. This features TRD tuned Fox internal bypass shocks, a quarter inch aluminum front skid plate, a locking rear differential, multi-terrain select and crawl control systems, in addition to special badging. This trim also gets second row captain's chairs. Third row seating is standard across the board. And sorry, the back seats are not removable. The TRD Pro also includes unique alloy wheels and Falcon Wild Peak tires. So a quick note about these tires. Like we saw on the Tundra TRD Pro, uh, the Falcon Wild Peaks are standard on this vehicle. And it even calls them the AT3W, which is the proper off-road version of the Wild Peak. However, <laughs> the blocks here are not as deep as a standard AT3W. Also, it is not peak rated, uh, which is a designation for deep snow. So these are not actually the same wild peaks you would get if you just went to a store and bought the AT3W. This is a lesser version. Will that affect us today? We're gonna find out. Under the hood is a powertrain combo shared with the Tundra pickup. This is a hybrid system with a 3.5 liter V6 and twin turbochargers. It also has an electric motor generator located between the engine and the transmission. Peak combined output is 437 horses, maximum torque, a meaty 583 pound feet. And yes, you can run it on 87 octane unleaded. Unlike the previous generation Sequoia, the four wheel drive system in this vehicle is part time only. That means that it is rear wheel drive most of the time. When things get slippery, you can switch it into either four high or four low as conditions demand. And today we are expecting those conditions to be very demanding because we're taking this up to a mountain lookout. It's the same location that we used for several other vehicles. However, this time it's gonna be a lot of snow and we're gonna see how well this TRD Pro can handle those tough conditions. But before we head out, I wanna point out a few of the features that are specific to this TRD Pro that Toyota sent us. Our test vehicle is equipped with the Toyota dash cam system. We're gonna use that as one of our cameras in the video. Also, this vehicle is equipped with power towing mirrors. Other options include the TRD roof platform and the special solar octane orange paint. For a price of, are you ready? 80,291 US dollars, including destination. Okay, let's check out this second row. Easy to step up into, thanks to the running board. Got tons of room for my head, for my legs. In the center console, I get all sorts of power. I get a USB-A, USB-C, and AC power. And then I get my own air con. Although at this price point, I would have hoped to have seat warmers in the second row, but there are not. I do, however, get a privacy blind. Oh, and my own vent. So that's nice. Yeah. Okay, let's climb up in this big boy. <laughs> Now I've already done a complete review of the all new Toyota Sequoia. Uh, we did it a few months ago when it first came out. Uh, this however is going to be all about an adventure. Uh, but still, for those of you who maybe didn't see the review, let's just quickly go over what we have in the main cabin. Power it on. Oh, that Toyota exhaust system. Now that's a specific TRD exhaust. Love it or hate it, it's certainly unique. Now, this interior is all business. I mean, we have this massive 14-inch uh, display that gives lots of information. 
Uh, but the nice thing about this vehicle is that even though the display is huge, they don't rely on it for all of the controls. You actually have a lot of push button controls right beneath it. And that's everything from the multi-zone climate control system uh, to some of the off-road features. Like I can lock my rear differential with a button right here. I can also change my camera view with a button right here. Towing, it's a button. Traction control off, still a button. The only thing I'm really missing here is a radio tuning knob, which would be a dial on the right. Instead, they put this really clumsily located USB-A socket. A USB-A socket in 2022, that's just weird. So some people might be saying, well, you know, USB-A is just as good as USB-C. Not true. USB-A has a maximum amount of amperage that it can output to a device. USB-C has a higher amount. So on newer, larger battery devices, USB-C does a much better job of keeping your device fully charged. So technically, there is a benefit to going with USB-C even when you're not using it for data. Although here you can use it for data to interface with uh, the main display for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but you can also use wireless on this system and it supports multiple devices, which is pretty cool. Some other features that are important in this vehicle, uh, it does come with the multi-terrain select system and crawl control, uh, which we will use a little bit later. Uh, those systems only function in four high, four low. You cannot engage them in two high. Overall, I really like this cabin. Um, there are a few things where I'm like, what? <laughs> like the massive Toyota text on the dash right over there. Uh, I mean, just everything is just so kind of outlandishly large in this vehicle because this is a large vehicle. But is this a vehicle that somebody would pick over, say, a Chevy Tahoe? And I think that's a tough, tough question. Um, and I think a lot of people are still going to choose the Tahoe over this vehicle. And one of the important reasons isn't even just the third row. It's the fact that you can get a Tahoe without a third row. Uh, you see, this vehicle, because it's a hybrid, they had to put the batteries somewhere and they put it under the third row. That means the third row is not only elevated, um, it also cannot be removed. Now, Toyota says it cannot be removed. This is in an interview we did with them earlier, uh, which is in our main uh, Sequoia review. They said they can't remove the third row because that actually adds protection to the batteries. And because Toyota is so much about safety, they wanted to make sure that you could literally drop a bowling ball back there and not damage the integrity of the battery pack. Okay, fine, but people like me want large vehicles so you can move a lot of stuff. It's not always about people. I have two kids. I don't need a third row. I just don't. I need room for cargo. And the fact that both there's batteries back there and a third row of, for kids back there means I cannot carry cargo in this vehicle, which means this vehicle pretty much useless for me. But that doesn't mean that we can't have fun with it because I am not everybody. Some people need that third row and some people need to get off the city streets and into the mountains. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. And today's adventure, I don't really know what direction it's gonna go because it snowed very heavily over the weekend. It's now been a couple days of slightly above freezing temperatures. There probably is some snow melt, but I have no idea how bad the foothills um, are gonna be. And we're gonna hit one of the foothills of the Olympics as we try to find an epic viewpoint in this new Sequoia. Along the way, we'll check out how well this vehicle cruises. I'll play with the dash cam system a little bit. Overall, enjoy the day, right? <laughs> Let's do it. So driving on the highway here, this is really a fun truck to drive. It's super comfortable. I have heated seats, I have cooled seats. It has plenty of power. Yeah, there are some downsides to the vehicle, but you know, they're kind of things that I've complained about before. You know, the third row, you cannot get it with a two row, which means that if you want a large vehicle with tons of cargo capacity, you're out of luck. Also, you can only get this as a hybrid, which means it's expensive. There's no cheap version of the Sequoia. I would love a non-hybrid two-row version of this. I'd probably buy one of those. But as for me, this vehicle as it's configured, it's just not something I would ever own because, dude, this is over 80 grand. That's a lot of money. And I know some of those are options I would never get, like these tow mirrors, because why would you want an off-road vehicle with an extra foot and a half on each side just to clip trees? And those look like they're expensive to replace. 
don't want to do that. <laughs> this vehicle also has Toyota's dash cam system. Now this is interesting in that it integrates a dash cam, which is a very popular way of kind of tracking what other drivers are doing around you. Uh, some insurance companies really like for you to be able to provide proof that what you did was not wrong, <laughs> and that provides that proof. Now, this system is very interesting in that it is integrated into the dynamics of the vehicle. So if you twitch or if you slam on the brakes, it automatically records what has happened up to that point and what happens after that point in gaps of about two to three minutes. You can also override it by just hitting a button up there, the big action button, and that will then roll video. And it records to a little 16 gigabyte, at least this one came with a 16 gigabyte card that can be removed and it records standard MP4 files. Though the resolution's not great, but it's definitely good enough uh, for what you need a dash cam for. So would I get that or would I get an aftermarket dash cam? Well, the nice thing with this one is it is integrated into the vehicle. So you can kind of not think about it until you need it. The downside of the Toyota dash cam is that the software isn't very good. When you try to copy files from the card using the built-in Wi-Fi, it drops most of the time. In fact, probably all the time. I've only tried to copy a couple files and it basically just forgets that it's connected via Wi-Fi while you're doing the download and it just shuts off downloads. Like, what's the point? Uh, that's the reason why as of the time of this filming, <laughs> the dash cam application on the Apple Store only has one and a half stars. So Toyota's gonna have to get on that if they want something like that to take off. If they want people to pay the extra money for that system, it better provide a superior experience. And currently, it doesn't. I like the idea of it though. I think it's good that Toyota is thinking ahead and what consumers are wanting. And I think a dash cam is a nice, nicely integrated piece. One less thing that you have to worry about after purchasing the vehicle. If you're thinking, hey, it's a hybrid, it probably gets really good MPGs. It doesn't. Um, around town, I get kind of around 15 MPGs. Now granted, this is a very large vehicle. It puts out lots of torque. Uh, so you are getting something for, you know, in exchange for poor economy. But the fact is, this is an expensive vehicle to buy. It's an expensive vehicle to operate. The only thing that you can kind of hope for is that because it says Toyota on the front, that hopefully uh, it proves to be a long-term uh, low maintenance vehicle. However, this is a fairly new powertrain for Toyota. It's only ever appeared in the Tundra just last year. Uh, so it still has time to prove just how reliable it is or isn't. Okay, well enough yammering about the vehicle. Let's head into the mountains and see how far we can get today on the unknown snow roads into the forest. Yeah. Now, one of the potential issues here is, of course, downed trees. We do have a support vehicle today. Nick is driving my uh, Ford Ranger Tremor Edition, and we do have like axes and uh, recovery boards and shovels and all the stuff that we need there uh, today, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> hopefully we don't need chainsaws. <laughs> wow, this snow is getting deep. Uh, we're rolling on, still hitting the pavement, which is nice. Uh, it'll be interesting once we get off the beaten track here what kind of conditions we run into though. Uh, I'm not sure how this is going to be today. This is either going to be awesome or it's going to end very quickly. <laughs> and off the main course onto the side road and already we are churning wheels. And the reason is of course because we are currently in two wheel drive mode. Yes, this does not have the fancy Torsen limited slip differential found in the older Sequoia. No, this one has a part-time system. So let's go ahead and switch this into four high because clearly we're gonna need something a little more than two wheel drive. Okay, we're in four high and away we go. Great. So this thing has 9.1 inches of ground clearance, which should be plenty for today. Uh, if we run out of clearance, uh, yeah, it'll, uh, we'll just see how we do. <laughs> so far, doing pretty good. I mean, we have probably about six, seven inches of snow overall with, of course, some troughs here and there. 
Um, the tires are rolling on top of the snow now. There is no longer any exposed road, and we're doing okay. Of course, we're also on a level surface here. Once we start climbing, it might change the dynamics. <laughs> uh, but right now, I'm just in four high, and I'm really enjoying this nice little um, adventure into the woods. It's a funny thing about driving in the snow. Sometimes if you get even a little bit off the track, the snow will steer your truck like it just did there off to the edge. So you do have to be oh, very diligent. It also a lot has to do with uh, the contours of the road. The snow is not necessarily equal to the contour. So you may not see a slope in the road because of the way that the snow drift collects. Uh, but that's okay. You just have to maintain diligence and maintain a speed that is, you know, going to be safe for the adventure. So you can have time to respond to those changes that you have to make in steering input. Okay, here we go. I keep hearing these beeps from the uh, built-in camera up here because I think whenever it detects a quick response, it oh, didn't do it that time, uh, it's thinking an incident has happened and it tries to loop it onto the uh, dash cam. I look forward to seeing that footage a little bit later. Of course, I'll insert it here in the video so you can see it in real time uh, where we have it. Okay, and we're just moseying along. Pretty nice. So far, tons of confidence with this vehicle. So earlier, I was mentioning how the older Sequoia, the previous generation one, had a fancy differential in the middle called a Torsen Limited Slip. That's short for torque sensing. What it'll do is shift power front to back as necessary. This one, they got rid of that and they went to a part-time system, which means when you go into four high, it immediately just engages the transfer case and that basically effectively locks torque front to back 50-50. Again, effectively. The actual math is way more complicated, but we're just going with that for right now. Uh, is one better than the other? Well, we talked to Toyota about it, and Toyota basically said the Torsen system isn't designed for this level of power output. They would either have to completely redesign the Torsen system or just stick to the part-time system. Considering the Sequoia is not a high-volume vehicle for Toyota, we know which direction they went in, being cost-effective, basically. Okay, here's where we're gonna be our very first climb. Wow, this is gorgeous. I love the mountains in the snow. There's a hill here, and this is the first time we've actually started to get some elevation. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is keep it into four high where we're already at, but I'm gonna turn on the multi-terrain select system. That immediately turns on the trail camera. Yes, even in four high. And uh, then I can pick which kind of input I want and I'm going to call it deep snow because that's what we have. So the MTS system, what it's all about basically for those who don't know is it's the multi-terrain select system. It uses individual wheel braking to shift torque left and right uh, between the wheels that have grip and the wheels that don't have grip. Uh, basically instead of having a wheel with no grip and just spinning and bleeding out all your torque, again I'm simplifying this, uh, it will shift that power by using brakes to push the power to the wheel that has grip. Now in a situation like this, that's obviously gonna change constantly. And I expect that the MTS system is going to allow for a little bit of wheel spin so that we can clear off our lugs with the torque, flinging that snow out, um, as well as trying to grip and churn its way through the snow. So um, let's see what it can do. <laughs> as I lay into the throttle, oh yeah. Now again, we don't want to be going way too quick here because we need that control to be able to compensate if the road kind of flings us one way or another. Oh yeah, man, it's doing solid. And under the tires themselves, oh, here's a deep snow section. Come on, we got this. Oh, oh, oh. And in case you're wondering, if you're in four wheel drive mode and you do start to slide, what you do is you actually put a little throttle into the driving, so you point where you want to go, then you add throttle. Um, that is, um, that will get you where you need to be. It basically, the front wheels will pull you out of the situation. When you're in rear wheel drive mode, you don't do that because you'll just create a spin, which is not ideal. Woo! <laughs> Can't get too excited, that's a cliff. <laughs> Thank you. 
So it is interesting because this uses coil springs in the rear, not leaf springs like some of the competition. When you do hit bumps, it doesn't automatically shunt you in the wrong direction. It actually does a pretty good job of keeping you tracking straight. Of course, we have to be really careful here as we're coming around the corner. I want to go full throttle, but there is nothing preventing this very large rig from falling off that cliff. So we got to be super careful. Oh, and uh, I am not going to drive around this tree. I'm going to move the tree instead. This particular Sequoia has less than 200 miles on it. So let's not scratch it. Man, that is a drop. I mean, I've driven here before with other vehicles and I've, yeah, I've seen this drop before, but something about being on snow that just makes it a wee bit more precarious. I think we'll do fine here. I'm just going to keep it in snow mode for as long as I can. And hopefully that is enough to get us all the way to the top. Man, that is beautiful. And though I really want to full throttle this, I am just feathering the throttle and trying to keep this on the track. Because the issue here is, of course, once you do lose control of your vehicle in the snow, it's very hard to change the attitude of the vehicle. So yeah, we're just going to keep tracking straight. And I can see somebody actually fell into a ditch right there. Had a good little recovery party going on. So I'm going to hug this to the right. And it's actually deeper snow here. And we're churning those wheels, but we're getting through it because I don't want to be sucked into the ditch. I wonder why it's stuttering like that. It's kind of annoying. Come on, let's, you got this. Keep this going. Let's keep this going. Okay, got to watch for those logs. Oh, so many down trees ahead of us. Huh, well, at least somebody else has been through here fairly recently, so that's good. Uh, it's helped create a couple troughs for us to track in. So we're still in four high, we're still in snow mode. It's doing great. Traction is tricky, but it would be tricky on any vehicle. Can we climb this? We got this. Oh, now we're getting into some fresher, deeper stuff. Oh. So this is where things are gonna to start to get tricky. Um, the snow is definitely over 9.1 inches is probably close to 10 to 12 inches um, because we're already pushing snow we're plowing a little bit in the front but thankfully it's not up to the lip yet so it's still just pushing it under the vehicle so it should be fine uh, it's icy but it's not too bad we don't have a layer of ice under the snow yet so the only ice we're really creating is when we're crunching down on top of the snow i think obviously somebody has been through here since it snowed and then it snowed on top of that so Basically, let's see what we got. Now I'm gonna keep the vehicle currently in four high with MTS snow mode. I'm sticking to that right now because that formula has worked very well. Uh, if we start to have tricky situations, I'll pop it into four low. Oh man, I don't know why I was vexing. This is so far super easy. Okay. <laughs> I guess so long as I have four wheels on the ground and I'm not in a ditch, will be okay today. Nice. I uh, don't want to scratch. Hug a little bit to the right. Okay, there we go. And then steeper makes the climb no problem. Yes! Whoa, okay, don't get too excited. Okay, so what do we have here? It appears as though just as the road gets really steep, the tracks end and I'm on my own. So this is a very steep climb. I think I measured it in the past and it was about 18 degrees. And uh, that's very, very steep. And now it's of course covered in ice and snow. So uh, for this, I'm just gonna, we've had good luck with it in four high snow mode on MTS. I'm just gonna stick to that for right now. And let's do it. See how well these tires do in these conditions. Now, I've been on this road before, so I'm not expecting anything surprising. The biggest issue is gonna be if, is if I start to slide backwards, that's gonna be a significant problem. So I'm keeping throttle really steady to try to keep forward momentum. Ooh, it's cutting traction. I'm starting to slide to the side. 
which isn't good. Let me try to reset and get straight on this road again. There is a significant drop on the right there that I want to avoid. Let's get back on track. Okay, back on track. Let's see if we can <laughs> make forward momentum. Ooh, ooh, skittish in the back there. Okay, now we're gonna reduce my throttle. Okay, reducing throttle is helping significantly. Can I just keep this throttle in? Oh, it's cutting power. This is the steepest part of the climb right here. Right here, it is bogging down. It's just cutting power. Oops, I'm starting to slide to the side now. The moment I go into a ditch, I'm done. The problem with these ditches is that they're not smooth like residential ditches. There's boulders in those ditches. I've seen this hill climb in the dry and that is not something we wanna mess around with. Okay, let me kind of back up a little bit here. Slowly get it back into the track. This is where a nice backup camera is really useful. And this is the one, this is honestly the one time where I really like having a big 14 inch display. So too much wheel spin is proving to be a problem. So I'm gonna put it into neutral and put it into four low. That's gonna smooth my throttle inputs even more. Uh, and I'm gonna keep MTS, so I'm in four low now. I'm gonna put the NTS in auto. We're just gonna let it do its thing. And I'm gonna lock the rear diff. Uh, that will keep power evenly to the back two uh, tires. It's not gonna cut power on one or the other because MTS not only adds braking, it also uses throttle uh, to control the disposition of the vehicle uh, to give improved grip, but it doesn't know everything. So let me make sure that rear, nope, I don't have that rear locker engaged yet. Okay, now it's engaged. So now we have four low, rear locker. Let's see if we can get this. Ah, uh, it's, oh, 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 starting to slide. I didn't like that. We started to slide backwards, just a hair there. You may not have seen it on camera, but I could feel it go whoop. Okay, nope, nope, our back is skewing. I'm gonna end up in that ditch. Let's see if I can get back aligned. So I feel like that did better, but this is a very challenging climb and I have to back up very slowly. I don't want momentum to take over. There, we're aligned. Let's try it again. This time I'm gonna ease a little bit more to the right. See if we can avoid that dipping into the hill. Ah. Oh, there we go. As soon as I let off the throttle, it's doing better. I don't want too much wheel spin. Oh man, I'm just inching here. Feel like uh, some of the other videos we've done in the snow. Is it getting hot in here? I feel like it's getting hot in here. Okay, here we go again. Oh, whoa, whoa, that was a shunt to the right now. Okay. Up, oh, too much spin. It starts to get on that ice and it just starts spinning those tires. Ease it back, ease it back. Okay, here we go. Oh man, are we gonna do this? Ah, uh, okay, I think we are not making progress here. So why am I not just going full throttle up this? Because that is when you have momentum start to get the best of you, and that's when mistakes happen, and that's when you spend the night on the side of a mountain hoping for recovery. Ah, uh, the problem here too is that the mountain kind of crowns in a little bit, which is fine when it's a little bit of snow. And it's definitely preferable to falling off the cliff. But this, <laughs> like I said, I don't want to go in there. Ah! Okay, well, I'm thinking that one more try. Nope. Uh oh. Uh. So I think at this point, the issue that we're having is, is the lack of grip. Clearly, it's a lack of grip. Um, if I had more aggressive tires, I think we would fare better, but I think this is the limit of these tires at stock pressure. Now we could air down a little bit, but it doesn't turn this vehicle into Superman. We are still going to have a very similar limit. Um, and I think this is pretty much where I feel safe. I wouldn't recommend at this point somebody going, oh, air down, you'll be fine. Because 
it's still challenging, it's still risky. So I am gonna call it on this one. Um, but I think that this is actually a really good truck. Um, the powertrain is good. I have questions about the packaging, but if the packaging works for you and you have the money and you like, you know, you really want that whole third row situation, this is a great truck. But if you need only two rows, you want cargo space, and honestly, maybe you want better MPGs because even though this is a hybrid, I mean, today, what did I get? I'm currently at 7.3 MPGs. Now, most of that's off-road, of course, so it's going to be horrible. But even on the highway, I kind of get around town, like, you know, around town and highway mixed use. I'm typically seeing around like 15 MPGs. I mean, that's what you're paying when you're, you have a vehicle that has this much torque. Uh, great system. Love the powertrain. Don't like the package. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthat. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share videos. We make them for you. And I do hope you enjoy them. And I also hope I get home safely as I ease down this hillside using this excellent backup camera at like one mile per hour. I think we did pretty good though. I'm actually really satisfied with that. That was, that was way better than I thought we were gonna do today. Way better. <laughs>